it has been such a long time since I've seen you all. Welcome back to Awana Central right here at my house. It's good to be back with you, even if just over video for now. Hopefully we'll get to really be together before too long. Listen, as we are starting off our Awana year this year, it's gonna look a little different. And all the Awana leaders tried to think, hmm, what should our council time lessons be talking about this year? Where in the Bible should we start looking for council time? We know it isn't really like being together in the same room, so we decided to do something just a little bit different. Every week, we're going to think through a Bible lesson that you probably are already familiar with, but we're going to think about it from another perspective. We're going to think, what can we learn about our attitudes and our actions and our responsibilities by observing the real people in the Bible? Real people, remember, who worshiped a real God and who were living out real adventures with Him. All right. So this whole time of having to be at home, it is a great time to really think about how we think, how we feel, and how we respond to others. Then, every week after I'm done giving you the Bible lesson, Mr. Shelton, our game leader, is gonna challenge you with a new game that you can do with things just found around your house. We hope that you and your family will try out the game and maybe even post a video of, of you and your siblings or maybe your mom or dad trying these minute to win it style games at home. Hashtag it Chapel City Kids so we can all root you on. And after the lesson, we will have a game for you to try at home. Now, today we are going to start with this. You all know what that is? Well, it's a lunchbox, right? Some of you might have never even seen a real live lunchbox before. But this was a lunchbox. In fact, it was my lunchbox when I was in school, about your age. And every day I would take my little lunchbox to school and at lunch I would open it up and inside there'd be something yummy. Nothing's inside this one, sorry guys. But there'd be something yummy in there, a sandwich and an apple maybe, or a sandwich and a tangerine, or, or maybe crackers and yogurt. Um, I might get, I might get lucky some days and get like yogurt and a piece of fruit. And did my lunchbox have to hold enough food for everybody in the whole cafeteria? No, of course not. My little lunchbox only had to hold enough food for me. And that's just about the right size with a little thermos in there full of juice. In fact, if I would wanted to bring enough food for the 200 kids packed in the cafeteria, would it have fit in this box? Do you think I could fit 200 sandwiches in there? I don't think so, <laughs> but I didn't always eat everything that I took to school. My poor mom would make me a tuna fish sandwich or maybe she'd make me a cheese sandwich. And sometimes I'd get there and maybe somebody had something that I thought looked better and we would trade. Maybe if somebody had a chocolate donut, I might try to trade my yogurt for that. Maybe if somebody had, I don't know, a plum, I might try to trade them my apple. If somebody had a ham sandwich, I would for sure be trying to trade my peanut butter and jelly for that, right? But what if I brought dry day old bread and fish jerky? Do you think anybody would have wanted to trade me for that? I don't think so, do you? And I wonder how I would have felt if the entire lunch cafeteria, like 200 people, wanted to eat my food. I wonder how I would have acted if a teacher had asked me to give away all my food for the day. Could I have been that generous? Would I be willing to give up what I had for lunch to other people so they could eat? I'm not sure I was that unselfish, to be honest. So in the Bible, we see that something even more amazing than that happened to a young boy with a little lunch. More people and more was at stake. Do you have your Bible? Of course, remember, this is Awana, so when you come to Awana video, what do you need to bring? Your Bible, that's right. Grab your Bible. I'll wait right here if you have to pause me. Okay, grab your Bible and open to John chapter 6, right? Now, let's take a look at the first few verses. Verse 1 says, After these things, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Now, the Sea of Galilee was really a lot like a big lake. It wasn't like an, like an ocean, it was a big lake. And it says in verse one, after this, 
That's a really good clue. Whenever you see that in the Bible, you might want to know after what? So I went back and looked. And in chapter 5 of John, we see that Jesus had healed a man and then he had gotten really, he had been questioned very hard by the religious leaders of the day. So he had decided he was just going to go away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee and spend some time alone, spend some time away from all the crowds and all the um, con contentious questioning that he had been experiencing. So he went. Let's pick it up in verse 2 now. Are you ready? And a great crowd followed him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up to the mountain and sat down with his disciples. And the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. All right, so the people wanted to be with Jesus so much that when they saw him crossing the Sea of Galilee, they decided to follow him. They walked around the lake to the other shore to chase after him. Soon there was a huge crowd of people, and you might wonder how many people, well, a lot more than were in my cafeteria when I was a little kid with my lunchbox, let me tell you. The Bible tells us there were 5,000 men, and then we need to add to that women that would have been with them, and children. So while we don't know exactly how many, we know there were 5,000 men, and we can estimate that probably means there were between 10 and 15,000 people there that day waiting to hear from Jesus. All right. Jesus knew the people must be really serious if they walked all that way to hear him, though, and he didn't rest. Instead, he spent the whole day teaching the people about God. So let's pick it up now again in verse 5. Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a large, large crowd coming toward them. And he said to Philip, where are we going to buy bread so that all these people might eat? He said this to test him, to test Philip. For he himself, Jesus, knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. All right, this tells us a couple of things about Philip. First of all, we know Jesus saw that the apostles were worried. Philip was from that general area and he would have known where to get food. Um, and so when he asked him, where are we going to buy bread for all these people? Philip was from a town close by. He would have had a good idea of where they might be able to get bread. But Philip was also doing some quick math and he's adding it up in his head. How much is bread? How much is bread? How much is, how much is it going to cost? How much is it going to cost? And he answered Jesus, I would have to work for eight months to earn enough to feed this crowd. That's what 200 denarii is. About eight months worth of wages. They didn't have that kind of money. What were they going to do? Well, Let's look at verse 8 and see what Jesus does next. Are you ready? Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, There's a lad here with five barley loaves and two fish, but what are these for so many people? Okay, so another disciple, Andrew, was out, he was trying to figure out what to do too. He was there that day, and here's this boy. Unlike me, he had not carried his lunchbox to school, had he? He was not at school. He was going to hear Jesus teach that day. And his mother had probably packed him a lunch. Maybe he packed it, but there was no refrigeration. There were no ice packs to put in to keep his lunch cool. So he had packed in his lunch things that wouldn't go bad without refrigeration. Barley loaves, and barley was a, a very coarse grain. It was not a real good bread. And they are probably about the size of a hamburger bun. Okay, so he had five barley loaves and two fishes. Now, if you leave meat outside, what happens to it? It turns bad, right? So probably this fish was dried and salted. Think like fish jerky, okay? Blech. We don't think that sounds very good, but that's what this little boy's lunch was. Five barley loaves and two fishes. Andrew didn't know what that little mount might do for 5,000, but he knew that Jesus could do anything. And so he took the boy and his lunch and took them to Jesus. Let's look at verse 10. Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was much grass in the place. So the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus took the loaves and when he'd given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. Wow. Imagine Jesus standing there with these barley loaves and dividing them up between the people and just he keeps going. This is our creator God. Guys, this is our creator God. 
creating more as he goes, right, from what he had. He gave bread and fish to everyone until they were full. That's enough of a miracle, but we haven't even gotten to the most exciting part, I think, personally, yet. Look at verse 12. And when they had eaten their fill, Jesus told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. In other words, we're not going to let anything go to waste. We're going to be thrifty, okay? So they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. They started out with five little bitty buns, five little loaves and two fish. And they wound up gathering up 12 big baskets of leftovers. Can you imagine being that little boy who offered up your lunch? Can you imagine what he must have thought to have his lunch used by Jesus in this way? You know, only Jesus could do something like that. Only Jesus is powerful enough to create, to take care of you and me to take care of a whole crowd of people like that. But you know, think about that little boy for a minute. Andrew is looking out over the crowd. That little boy could have hid his meal. He could have tucked his lunch under the edge of his tunic maybe, or pushed it behind him where no one could see. He didn't have to share. He was just one little boy and his lunch was just enough for one little boy. He was just one person in a crowd of thousands and thousands and I bet he was hungry. Nobody was even offering to trade him a chocolate donut for those loaves and fishes, were they? No, this little boy was giving sacrificially to Jesus. He was giving something up. That tells us something about that little boy. It tells us he was a gracious giver, that he was not selfish, that he was thinking of others. And it tells us that he trusted Jesus. You know, when we put everything that we have in Jesus' hands, it's amazing what he can do with it. No gift or talent that we have, our time, our love, none of that is too small with Jesus. No offering is too small to make a difference. I know that you're probably seeing way fewer people than you used to a year ago, right? But you have big opportunities right now to share your love and your time and your patience with the people you, that are right around you. Look for opportunities to give to God and watch him make a blessing out of what you trust him with. You're going to be amazed what Jesus can do when you're unselfish with your time, when you're unselfish with your service. I wonder how unselfish you can be this week. Can you find someone to serve, not because you're asked, just because you want to help them? That's okay, mom. It, I know it's not my turn, but let me fill the dishwasher for you tonight. You're tired, why don't you go sit down? That's okay, Dad, I'll help Bobby do his homework. Yeah, come here, I'll read you a book, little sister, little brother. How about giving your time or giving your heart and your love to someone who needs it even more than you do? Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for all the gifts of family and friends that you have given us. Thank you for the gift of your presence in our lives. Help me to be unselfish with the gifts you've given, loving others, sharing with them. Thank you for the example of this young boy in John chapter 6 of the Bible to remind me that you can take my little bit and make it enough for whatever you want to accomplish. In your name I pray, amen. Okay. We've had our lesson from the Bible today, and you know what that means, Awana kids. Next up, our game director, Mr. Shelton. Can we have a round of applause? Yay! Here we go. Hi, guys. It's Mr. Shelton here, and we can't be there in person, but we can still have fun with some games. We've got a minute to win it for you tonight. So you're going to need a few little things. You're going to need like two bowls, some chopsticks, or some extra pencils. Just regular old pencils will work. 
Okay, and I have my lovely assistant, Mrs. Shelton, ready with the timer. Ta-da! And you're gonna need some cereal, like Cheerios or Kicks or something like that. Put some of the cereal in a bowl, have the other bowl empty. You get ready with your chopsticks. Now, Mr. Shelton has a lot of fun trying to work chopsticks. But you have your assistant tell you when it's ready and when it's time to go. Okay, so you try and get as many pieces of the cereal from one bowl to the other using your chopsticks. Hey, I'm doing better than I thought. That's fun. And as you can tell, I got a few of them in the bowl. So let's count them. How many you got? Okay, let's see. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I got sixteen in a minute. All right. Now you try it and post your videos or hashtag them to Chapel City Kids because I want to see you guys doing this. See you next week. See you next week.